Welcome to Soul Care, everyone. This week, we are going to be doing an interactive meditation exercise, and our topic is recovering and healing and nursing a broken heart, not just romantically, a wound that may have been had or covered over time but also just the concept of a broken mind whether that means you're going through cycles in your mind that are negative whether that means that you are repeating certain habits that you wish you could stop that you want to get a hold on your mind and live a better and healthier life The goal of today is going to be to leave knowing that you have a friend in Jesus, no matter where you are in life and in your walk. Sometimes God feels so far away, but to know him as our friend is to know him through pain, through suffering, through hurt, through confusion, and sitting with him, even if it's in the silence, as if we would sit with a friend who we know just cares about our well-being. So our goal for today overall is to know that you are deeply loved and that what you need is being prepared for you. So let's have a quick word of prayer and get into today's meditation experience. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are still alive and able to heal and evolve and transform day by day. We pray that this session, this experience with you is a fresh encounter, that we feel love, we feel acceptance, we feel a new wind, a fresh wave coming in right now. We thank you and we sit in expectation in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so the first portion of this, we are just going to have a moment of surrender to acknowledge any pain that you may feel, you may have felt, you may feel right now, or something you just would like to lift off of you. So we're just going to open our hands, which is going to be one of our centering exercises because it's symbolizing that surrender to God, that letting go, and that it is out of your hands. And therefore, you don't have to control the outcome. So right now, whatever point of pain you would like to bring and surrender, please open your hands and Think of what that may be. And if you can't think of anything, I welcome you to join me in surrendering my expectations of what my past should have looked like or what I hoped would have happened and that it didn't. That pain that I have felt for some time now in this feeling that things should have been different in the past. I work on surrendering that in moments that that feeling comes over me so that I'm able to move forward and enjoy and be present in the now of my life. So whatever your heart is saying to you right now as we open our hands, we're gonna have a moment of silence for you to say whatever that might be for you. And deep breathing just helps our body to center itself. It's not for just what it looks like, but it truly is for our nervous system to be set at a cadence that welcomes in a fresh breath of air, not just short breaths, but a long, nice breath from your core. So as you sit there with whatever you have decided to bring to God, we would just say, Heavenly Father, please take and lift off of me what I have just chosen to surrender. Please help my mind, my body, and my spirit to understand that it is out of my hands. Therefore, 
my mind is also free from it. Amen. And sometimes it's hard for us to acknowledge the pain and to actually sit with us because life moves so fast and often we may not give ourselves that time to recover, to actually sit with our pain long enough to allow God to deposit his plan for the pain into us. And whenever you sit with God and you do this intentionally, he's always going to deposit something into you, whether that's joy, whether that's love, whether it's certainty, whether it's a feeling of acceptance. When you make this open space for God, he always shows up. So some tips here in moving forward from instead of holding this pain letting it flow and letting it go if you think in your mind throughout the day something that hurts you or something that's a a cycle thought a thought that just continues to repeat itself if there's one thing that you would have liked an old partner an ex a family member a parent to know about how heartbreak has changed you, we are now going to give ourselves a moment to say that. Because when we go through things, even though time has passed, time alone does not heal us. Our ability to be open and transparent, not just with ourselves and God, but with others, really does help our journey of healing. So in this moment, I would like you to think about one thing that you would have liked to say, whether it's to a parent, to an ex, to someone you were in a situation with, a friendship, anything that may have caused you heartbreak. What would you say about how it may have changed you? And that's part A of the question before we get to now what we are going to be expecting from God. So the one thing that I am going to say to myself is that my feelings matter. I often felt that in this cycle that this heartbreak sent me into was feeling that what I had to say didn't matter. And even as I speak right now, it's hard because when you feel silenced in any way, you can start to question your worth or that your voice is important. And if anyone can share in my testament right now that I have been the strong friend growing up, that I have been quite independent growing up, So when I did make spaces for people to show up for me, if they didn't, it hurt because I wouldn't often make those spaces for people. And as we grow and as we recover, we must say all the things we did not say to others, to ourselves, or to God so that the child in us can at least know that that was important. Just because you weren't able to say it, just because you felt that it may have not been the right time, just because it wasn't being received well, doesn't mean it didn't matter. So your voice matters and your feelings do too. So I welcome you, if you have nothing to say in this portion, to just say, my feelings matter. Because we are human beings, no matter how much we know in the spirit, We're experiencing the spirit in the human. So take this time. You can open your hands or you can sit with yourself. But we're going to do this before our next point. One thing that you would have liked to hear post heartbreak, whether it was an apology, anything that comes to mind. And you are on your own time frame in all of this. So if you're still sitting in this point, that's okay. In this next portion, 
we are going to grab our hands like this and it's an exercise of actually embracing yourself embracing yourself and it's an exercise that I use for post heartbreak recovery because recovery happens in stages and some stages are harder to get through than others but just wrap yourself like this and now we are asking ourselves what's one thing you would like to ask God to repair right now just as we sit you can sway or you can just hold yourself and embrace yourself. You could even close your eyes and imagine God embracing you and telling you that everything that you have felt, every tear that you have cried, it has mattered to him. So if you cannot think of one thing you would like to ask God to repair, I I'm asking God to repair my ability to trust romantically and in friendships and even family because our expectations throughout life change when we think we cannot trust people and even when God sends new people or old people in a new way we may have trouble trusting because of things that have happened in the past I have asked God to repair my femininity, my gentle heart, my expectation, my love, my patience. So whatever you would like to ask God as we are in this self-embrace, ask him. I am saying, Heavenly Father, please repair my ability to trust what is of and from you. In the name of Jesus. You can just release from the self-embrace. And there is a scripture that speaks of God binding up the wounds of our hearts. And today, that's just the simple phrase we are going to be standing on that God has the ability to bind up the wounds of our hearts. So as we transition to this next and last point, know that God is going to bind up the wounds of your heart. Just imagine God saying, give me it, give me that too, even that too, bring it to me, here it is, you're pushing it off of yourself, you're giving it to God, and when God has all of it in his hands, he's saying, I'm binding it up, I'm covering it up, I'm making sure you don't experience that same thing again, I'm making sure you don't look back and see that same thing and expect that same hurt to happen to you because he's doing a new thing. So God is binding it up, and just picture a bundle of something being bound up and then thrown into the sea. There is a imagery in the word that is called the sea of forgetfulness. Imagine God binding up all of your hurt and throwing it into the sea of forgetfulness where you don't have to look back anymore because you've learned your lessons, because you've surrendered your heart, because you've surrendered the hurt, and now it's time to experience the new thing that God is doing with you. And in this session, one thing that's very important is to throw away the timeline of what you think healing should look like because oftentimes there is not four steps to healing. Oftentimes, even through my recovery from what I considered a heartbreak romantically and even at the same time in tandem, my own self, my own self going through heartbreak within self and family and learning new dynamics and grief and death, how these things work intertwined can all be hitting you at the same time, but we must give them their space and each has their own timeline. So enjoy the time of healing and becoming because God is preparing a place and a table for you to enjoy. 
throw away the timeline that it has to be done in a year or six months or five days or why you're not dating again or why you're not interested in such and such or why you can't speak to those people because they are triggering to you at the moment. Respect whatever point you are in your journey of healing, understanding that there is no one blueprint to healing because we do not all have one individual experience of this life. So as we finish today, we are going to have an imagination time. Now that we have sat with our friend Jesus and given him a rundown on what we may need to surrender, what's on our heart, what kind of post heartbreak recovery we need in the mind, now it's time to just close your eyes if you can. And I just welcome you to just relax. Relax your mind right now. And imagine God sitting next to you and him telling you, I have heard all that you have said. I have seen your tears and I have felt your cries. I have gone through this with you. And it's not that I desired for you to feel such pain, but this life can sometimes be hard. So imagine God taking your hand and telling you, I have a surprise for you. I have made a table for you and I would like to invite you into the room. So go get dressed, put on whatever makes you feel best and come with me. And as God in you get up and begin to walk to this new place, you don't know what to expect. But what he's saying is, trust me. I know what you need. And I've been preparing it for you as I've been preparing you for it. And when he opens this door, this table that is set before you is of gold. The room is warm. There is the love that you've been seeking there. There is the trust that you've been seeking there. There is the wholeness and the fullness and the embrace of ones that love you. And there is a partner that's there for you. There is help that's there for you. There is wholeness and laughter in this room. And this is going to be part one of an imagination exercise of the table God has prepared for you. But this is just saying you're in the right room. There is a table that the Lord has for you. And you are about to see all that he's planned for you. But know that he's heard you. He's felt this with you. You're in the room feeling the warmth now. The table is about to be unveiled of what is on it. The treats, goodies, the right meal catered to you is about to be seen. But you know at least you have made the right choice to surrender and you've made the right choice to say, even after it all, I trust that I have a friend that knows me best even when I didn't feel understood by anyone, maybe. So let's end in a word of prayer. And this is part one to the unveiling of your table after the heartbreak, after the tears, after the hurt, after you being strong enough to sit in this moment and surrender whatever it is. There is better coming. There is more coming. So let's pray and get ready to receive, even as God reveals to you what he's going to be showing you in this next season of your life. Heavenly Father, we have sat before you with broken pieces, with pieces we attempted to glue back together, with hurt, with tears, with the residue of disappointment and anger and grief. And we just pray that you will accept us wholly for who we are. We thank you for making a table for us to enjoy. 
what comes after the rain. There is a rainbow on the other side of this moment of rain and we know that you are going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could have ever asked. So in this moment of healing, we say thank you. May we leave lighter, may we leave better, knowing that you love us and that what we need is being prepared for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I love y'all, stay encouraged and know that what you are facing today is going to behold what God does for you tomorrow. Your grief, your sadness, your tears are going to watch you be blessed, you recover it all, and you feel joy like you've never felt it before. Be well, and I'm excited for part two next time. Keep meditating on the fact that you are a new person and you deserve a mind that is new too. That's how we take care of our souls. See you next time.